have you ever wondered what professional tennis players do to improve their physical speed and power? Well, in today's video, I'm going to show you a professional strength and conditioning session at the Moratogli Tennis Academy. Just to give context to this session, a couple of weeks ago, I spent one week at the Moratoglu Tennis Academy with one of my players, Felix, in preparation for a series of 15 and 25K futures events. And during this week, Felix had a strength and conditioning session every day of the week with none other than Cameron Norrie's personal strength and conditioning coach. Coach Vashek. Each day there was a different theme. One day was cardio, one day was core, one day was strength. But the session that I'm going to share with you today was all around speed and power, primarily around sprints. After a bit of mobility work in the strength and conditioning tent, Vashek took the players to the outdoor fitness area, which appeared to be half of a hard court. Now, I don't know whether this was purpose built or whether it was a hard court before, but it was a really cool addition to a fitness space as it allows you to work on tennis specific movements. But yeah, as you can see, Vashek took the players through a cross the court warm up. Each exercise was specifically designed to warm up the body parts that were gonna be used in this power and speed session. Vashek was doing some really good visual demonstrations of each exercise, which I didn't film all of them as I was actually watching them myself. But as a coach, it's vital that you can demonstrate exercises properly so that you can get the most out of your players. Once the warm-up was complete, Vashek got out some small hurdles for some plyometric work. The aim of these first few exercises was to activate the calves and ankles, minimizing knee bend, being as springy as possible, really isolating the lower body. Vashek would give the athletes short technical feedback between exercises. When I, when I work, I have, I'm tense, okay? I have the stiffness in my core. When I'm in the air, I relax everything, okay? So, so you're very fluid. Looks like the fourth match. You do nothing. It's simple. Each set was repeated three to four times before moving on to the next. Vashek then replaced the small hurdles with bigger ones to introduce the quads, the hamstrings and the hips. First, the athletes would make two touches before jumping each hurdle, finishing with a big broad jump. As you can see, the players were starting to use their upper body a little bit more. The next set introduced a medicine ball and removed that extra pop on each jump. So players were only to touch the floor once between each hurdle. If you feel the ball going from your hands very easily and going very far, the link was good, okay? As you can see, Vashek was talking about syncing the body parts together for a more efficient kinetic chain. You store the energy and from here you go, bam, everything. You yeah, I'm not everything. feeling much here. You keep your hands here. Like this. Not like this. You keep it here to push. If you do like this, you can't push from here. Here. This was a great way for players to give themselves feedback on whether their kinetic chain was efficient or not. If the medicine ball were to fly out of their hands effortlessly, then they made really good use of that ground reaction force from the feet up through the legs, up through the trunk, and out through the arms. Just quickly, if you're finding this video interesting so far, hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this. Many thanks. Next up, Vashek got out the heavy duty resistance bands for some partner work. The active player's job was to drive one leg up and then hard down into the ground before driving the next leg up, a bit like a march. This was to be done slowly and powerfully. The partner behind was to resist the players by holding that resistance band. At first, the players struggled with timing as doing it slowly required good balance, but also with timing each stride. Most players tended to be stronger on one leg, so they spent more time on that leg and less time on the other leg. Vashek gave the players instant feedback to make sure that wasn't happening. and By the end, they were really timing each stride really well. The next exercise was a progression from the last one and was really focused around one stride. Rather than just striding the leg up and down into the ground, this one was more focused around getting distance going forwards. So it was really about driving that leg upwards and forwards to create a powerful stride. Again, this one was awkward for the players at first as that back leg were to be left behind. But like each of these exercises, isolating a very specific move within the sprint will help the players to be more powerful when they put those moves together afterwards. And same thing, I try to start leaning forward. When I, when I feel like, okay, I will turn that, boom. So from the hips, I'm down with the band, 
The final progression of this exercise before going into sprints was putting it all together. Again, the players had their resistance bands, but they were now to put multiple strides together using the feedback that Vashek gave them before, striding each stride equally, driving that knee up into the air and then down into the ground and really leaning forwards into those strides. At this point in the session, the players were ready to test their sprint speed. Vashek put out some speed gates, as you can see here, to measure the players' speeds at 10 meters and 20 meters. It was important for Vashek to measure the splits, as some players can be more powerful within their first step but slow down towards the end of the sprint, whilst others might be weaker on the first step but might be able to pick up momentum along the way, but might be able to pick up momentum along the way. As you can see, this is a real strength area for Felix. He's a very powerful player and has a very fast sprint. You might have seen in some of his videos how good he is at picking up drop shots. Now, of course, being a powerful sprinter isn't everything in tennis. If you put Usain Bolt on a tennis court, he'd be great at picking up drop shots, but he might not be so good at lateral movement. So this is just a small element of strength and conditioning, but a very important one. For you as a tennis player, it's vital that you mix this in amongst agility work as well. Because these athletes are training full time, they have enough time within their strength and conditioning schedule to designate a whole session towards speed and power. However, in reality, if you're not training SNC every day, it may be more helpful for you to mix these exercises in with an on-court session. Ah. What was really interesting for me as a coach and spectator watching this session was seeing how Vashek managed the player's workload. There were plenty of rests in between sprints and in between exercises to make sure that the players were giving their maximum effort. If a player looked like they were starting to struggle, Vashek would increase the amount of rest time, making sure that they could give it 110% on the next one. What was also important in the session was the measurement part of the sprints at the end, making sure that players knew their times and their split times so they were competing against themselves and against the others to be quicker on the next one. And finally, to improve somebody's sprint speed, there are tons of different moves within that sprint that can be isolated, as you saw in the different exercises before. So there you go, I hope you found it interesting. Let me know if you've got any questions in the comments below, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Take care.